three, I think we have one more person. Three, two, one. Oops. Uh, oh, there it goes. Yay! Yes. Oh, that's the right answer. It's always positive. It's one F K S squared and or K S squared. So it's always positive. When the potential energy of a conservative inc system increases, what happens to the wrong button? Kinetic energy. Fifteen seconds. System, basically the kinetic plus the potential is constant, so if kinetic, the potential goes up, the kinetic has to go down. So what do we have here? This is, what is this? Here we have concrete, here we have a platform, here we have springs. What's the purpose of this? Why do we put concrete on a spring platform? Or this is for long, this is for uh, she needs to know towels for like uh, towels. Also, it's like you know when you have to leave those tubes. No, the towels. No, they compress the spring. You compress the spring. What's the advantage of compressing the spring? You don't have to pick it up as much. You don't have to pick it up as much. Right? When you put weight in here, what's going to happen? It's going to go down. So you're always you never have to pick things up from the bottom. You have a lot of towels in here, the springs will stretch and it will be nicely at the top. If you take things off, it's going to lift them up and make it easier on your back. And so basically, as each uh, stack is removed in the top under each towel, you're going to rise slightly because you're basically, some of the potential energy is transformed into uh, increasing gravitational potential energy. Uh, Anyway, we can figure out what the spring constant needs to be. Here we have, what do we have here? What are we looking at? Now this is actually a water balloon launcher. Here's a boy, here's a water balloon launcher. And these are elastic cords. And so you can figure out, if you pull back a certain amount, you can figure out what? How far we're going to go, what's the velocity when you release it, how far is it going to go, etc. Here we have a roller coaster. So when we have at A, we know how we have basically all potential energy. How fast are we going to go at B? How fast are we going to be going at C? Why do we care about the velocities at B and C? You don't want to fall out. And you don't want to have too much acceleration as you're going around the tight corner. Uh, because people don't handle accelerations. So what is a conservative force? Okay. Gravity is a conservative force. Any force where this F with a circle dot dr, what does that F with a circle mean? It's a path, yeah, it's basically a path integral. Uh, so basically, what, what it's basically saying is as long as I go from A to B and then back to A, we're going to get a total of F dot dr is equal to Zero. And it doesn't really matter how if you go to A to B and then back to A or A way over here, then we can go way over here, then go way over here, and oh whatever. And then you go down here. So the path, what we're saying is, is that the path really doesn't matter as long as we get back to where we started from. As long as we're back to A. We go like this, or if we go all the way around, as long as we're back to A, and basically it's a conservative force. So the energy I gain by my finger going up and down, uh, the energy I gain, the potential energy I gain, or the work I had to do to get my finger up high, I got back from gravity when I moved it back down. My arm is not conservative, but gravity is conservative. So basically its force only depends on position, and is independent of velocity and acceleration, then it's basically a conservative force. So, uh, anyways, calculus talks about this. 
But basically, our conservative forces we have in this state, this course, are gravity and springs. And so we can talk about the total potential <coughs> energy, which is called V for, I still have no idea why. Uh, but we call it V, uh, and we're like blind lemmings following the people so that everybody else, it's a language and this is what they say. Uh, so it's the measure of the amount of work by a conservative force will do when a body changes position. So we have the total potential energy, uh, change of potential function, gravity, and springs. Uh, and so the two types. Gravity, it's what? MGH or W times Y is the potential energy. And so basically what we have, we need to set up a datum. Where do we want to set up a datum? Well, we can set up a datum here, we can set up a datum here, we can set up a datum at the floor. It really doesn't matter. Because basically it's a change in height that matters. So frequently it's easier to set up a datum at the top. So at least one of your answers is going to be zero. Or we'll set up a datum at the bottom. So at least one of your answers is going to be zero. But your choice of datum allows you some flexibility. The convenient location. Positive potential energy if we're above the datum, negative if we're below the datum, you get to set the datum. Spring, we don't get to set the datum. Where is the datum for a spring? That's unstretched. It's the point where the force in the spring is equal to zero. Uh, so depending on how long your spring is initially, uh, that's where your datum is going to be. And then the potential energy is 1 half ks squared. It doesn't matter if we're in tension with positive s or compression with negative s because what? Because it's squared. And so minus 1 squared. And so basically it doesn't matter if you're in tension or compression. Spring is going to be the same. So it's always positive energy. And that was the first uh, quiz. And so basically if we have conservation of energy, we have T1, what's T1? Kinetic your energy. initial kinetic energy plus your initial potential, potential energy is equal to final. final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. It, that's going to be a constant. And so uh, if, if we had some work non conservative forces, we would have an additional work going from 1 to 2. Uh, it's non conservative in that. Uh, there's our sun, and so that tells us we have an example problem coming up. So we have a two kilogram collar moving down with a velocity of one meter, four meters per second at A. We have a spring constant of 30 newtons per meter. The unstretched length is one meter. Uh, what we want to find is the velocity when S is equal to one meter. What should we be doing? If we listen to it, we're doing a free body diagram. Actually, no, because we don't. We're not going to use Newton's law. We're using energy. conservation of energy. So we need to do a positional diagram. Where are we at the beginning? Where are we at the end? Uh, so what we want to do is conservation of energy. We, why don't we want to do this with Newton's law? Well, the the angle of the spring is going to change with position. We need to integrate that over the entire distance, and it just sounds too scary. Uh, you could, maybe. You could probably try four times. If four of you could do it, then maybe one of you will get it right without doing the math. Or it's very easy to do with uh, poten potential, <laughs> kinetic and potential energy. And so what we get, our basic equation is T Let's say TA plus BA is equal to TB plus BB. So at A, we're here. And then at B, we've moved down one meter. And this is, this is B, and this is given there. So we're given uh, M equals 2kg, uh, B 
A equals four meters per second, and K is equal to 30 newtons per meter. We want to find VB at S equals one meter. set the data mat. Where is our height equal to zero? At the bottom. At the bottom? At the top. At the top. Say bottom. So potential energy is positive. That's gravity. Well, the problem, yeah, potential, that's, unless what? What was the next thing? Well, what happens if we want to figure out where we're going to stop? In there. And it's going to be down from here, but then the total distance would be this plus this. And so this is our starting position. So we could basically set both of them will work, but let's say h equals zero right here. And so this equation, yeah, should be c and c, so that it matches the figure. Okay, what is our kinetic energy at a? Half it's one half mass times VA squared. VA initial is not zero. So this is going to be one half. Our mass is 2 kg. And VA is 4 meters per second. And that has to be squared. And that is 16 uh, watts. Joules. I was in last lecture. Okay, and now our potential energy at A from our spring is equal to what? One half K S A squared is equal to what? One half our K is 30 newtons per meter. And our S, what is our S? Well, it says we're unstretched. We have S zero is one meter. So it's 2 minus 1, so it's 2 meters minus 1 meter squared, which we can almost do in our head too. This is 15 joules. We could actually do this in our head. All right. VA from gravity, because we're going up and down, we need to take into account gravity, is equal to what? MGHA, which is equal to? Zero joules. So that's at A. What about at B? Well, PB, the kinetic energy at B is basically what we're trying to find. And so our kinetic energy at B is one half BC squared, not B. Uh, so that's what we're trying to find. What about from the spring? BCS is one half KSC squared, which is equal to one half times 30 newtons per meter times what? It's two squared plus one squared square root, so it's a square root of five meters. So this is the square root of five meters minus one meter. Because we always have to account for the fact that at one meter we're not stretched at all. And that's going to be squared. And that one, if it was just five, we could do it in our head, but it doesn't work. And so this is 22.9 Joules. What about from gravity? We see if gravity is equal to mg hb, which is equal to 
2kg times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times hp. What's hp? Negative 1. Negative 1. It's gone down 1 meter. And so this is minus 1 meter. And that actually is a negative, and that's OK. And this is, turns out it's negative. 19.62 joules. So from our equation, what do we have? Plugging it in, we're trying to find T is basically BC, which is equal to one half M. This is capital B. Your potential energy at C, which is one half mass times your velocity at C squared, is equal to what? TA. That's TA plus VA minus TC. So it's equal to TA, we have is 16 joules, plus VA is the spring and gravity, so it's plus 15 joules plus zero joules, plus the initial kinetic energy, so we already did that, potential energy, so minus, I solved this backwards, this is TC. I always get confused, I don't know why they call P and B. So basically, our final potential energy is the spring, which is 22.9 joules, plus the gravity, which is minus 19.62 joules. And this all should be minus. And so we basically, what was M? This was 2, so we get a half times 2 is 1. So we can basically get BC squared is equal to that. And from that, we can get that BC, our final velocity, is 5.263 meters per second. That's funny that I could get mistaken for the potential energy of C. I know. It's a small b. I don't know how to make a big b. Huh. What were you saying? <laughs> Let's do p, e, and k. But the book, okay, next time I'll try to do p, e. So I, I have no problem if you use p, e, and k, e. That's usually what I do. I'm trying to follow the book in that. If the blind leads the blind, they both fall into a pit. So what would happen if we would choose h is equal to zero here? What would be different? Positive H. This would be a positive H, so it would be what? 19.62? And this would be? Zero. zero. So we would end up with, this would be 19.62, and now this, would, this is a minus a minus, which is positive. So you get the same answer whether you call this H is equal to zero or this H is equal to zero. So we're good to go. Is your pretty thing. Concept quiz. <coughs> if the work done by a conservative force on a particle as it moves between two positions is minus 10 foot pounds, what is its change in potential energy? So, did you get conservative forces? How we calculated them magically? Think about gravity. Mm -hmm.
There's a kinetic energy and uh, I'm just wondering if it's like kinetic energy and word go hand in hand together. We have the initial kinetic energy plus the word from one to two is equal to the final kinetic energy. So that's how work energy goes. And so rather than talking about the work going from one to two, we broke that into potential energy. Which way are we moving? Up. Yeah. Up. You're going to be going up against gravity. Negative means that the force is in the opposite direction as the motion. Yeah. Yeah. So we're moving it up because the force is down. Now what happened to our potential energy? It increased. It increased. And so therefore when the work is negative, the potential energy is positive. So C was the right answer, which most of we got. But isn't it the chain? Chain of field from the high. Energy is force times distance. It's work. So foot pounds in the English system is one foot pound is not equal to one joule. One newton meter is one joule. So that is the one that we both. I'm wondering, uh, why is it not 10? Because isn't it the it work? It is 10. No, negative 10, sorry. Because if the work is done by, the, the work is, if you use that equation, that uh, conservation of energy, you know, like the previous yeah. time, wouldn't it be just negative 10? Like, if it's just finalized emission, that's the change of, or is that not? So what does it, when the work by the external force is negative, what does that mean? That means that the distance is opposite of the force. And so the distance has to be up. What happened to our potential energy? It went up. And so that's how we have a positive potential energy. Can you look at it by looking at that equation? No, no. because that equation, no, that was looking over the derivation I went over really quickly, is what that was basically conceptually looking over. But since you had had it before, I went over it really quickly. Uh, All right, the work done by a spring we had was minus one half ks squared, minus s2 squared minus s1 squared. It can be either positive or negative. What about the potential energy? What is the value of the potential energy? Hopefully you got it right now. Or negative, what about this? Work, remember, gives you a positive potential energy. 
And so what we did is this minus this negative S2, all we did is just it to the other side. So that we basically have always have potential energy and we always have like positive numbers. Because we got confused the last time, even I got confused when trying to deal with the work of a spring. It's always conservative. And so the spring is always conservative. It's just it's a lot easier to keep track of if you always talk about potential energy rather than trying to figure out the work of the spring, where does the make negative sign go in there? All right, we don't want to go ahead. Okay, so how do we do? We don't have time to do this in the group, so we'll have fun with roller coasters. Why would we care about what are we trying to figure out? We have a roller coaster. Uh, we want to know, we want to basically make B without leaving the track. What does leaving the track mean? Falling down. Falling down, yeah, that would be bad. And then we want the reaction force on the car when we're at C. Uh, why do we care about the reaction force? Let's, yeah, so it's a centripetal Force. It's the force. It relates to the force that the person experiences. Also, we don't want our roller coaster to structure. The structures of our roller coaster is going to be experiencing that force, and we don't want our structure to fail. Uh, so even if the car doesn't move track, if the track leaves the track, so we use our dynamics to analyze our statics as far as our input. So, how do we go about this? What method do you think we want to use? Energy. Work energy. <laughs> right? How would we know that? If this wasn't in the middle of a work energy lecture, if this is not like a kind of test, how would you know you need to use work energy? Right. right. We have basically heights and we're looking for velocities. So initially we need velocity. Once we have the velocity at C, then we can get the force by three body diagram. And the acceleration is one half, uh, it's, it's v squared over r, is your acceleration around a circular path. Uh, but the first thing we want to do is figure out what our velocity is. So what's going on at v? Well, let's do a free body diagram. We don't, when we're not leaving, what's going on? Right, we would have a normal force which is equal to zero at the minimum possible speed. What other forces? Gravity, this is mg. And this has to equal what? Mass times v squared over r. So therefore, since these are equal, we get that mg equals mv squared over r. Mass is canceled, so we can get that v is equal to the square root of g over r, which is equal to what is it? Wait, not gr. The square root of r times g. The r goes to the other side, and that's equal to r is what? N. And 9.81 meters per second squared. So our velocity at V is 9.905 meters per second. Okay, so that's basically to start solving the problem. What has to be going on at V? Well, we have to be going 9.905 meters per second squared at V not to fall off. So now we can go back to our work energy, or uh, conservation of energy. And so what do we get? Our basic equation is Ta plus Ea equals Tb. I got it right this time. Base K. Yes, that's a wonderful idea. And then I won't get confused. So we have our kinetic energy at A plus our potential energy at A is equal to our kinetic energy at B plus our potential energy at B. 
and now we can actually read it. All right, kinetic energy at A is what? One half mv squared. It's one half mass v a squared, which is equal to? One half eight hundred kg times three meters per second squared. And oh shoot, I didn't uh, write that down. And so someone can figure this out. What is it? Three six zero three six zero zero. Joules. Uh, potential energy at A is equal to, well, where are you going to set H is equal to zero? Well, they, they said H is equal to zero at the ground, and so this is equal to MGH, where H equals zero at the ground. And so this is equal to our mass, which is 800 kg times g, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times h, which is just h. Are we solving for h? We're solving for h. What's the minimum height h of the hill? And then we have our kinetic energy at b is equal to 1 half mbb squared, so it's 1 half times 800 kg times VV, we said had to be 9.905 meters per second squared. And what's this equal to? My problem is I solved it all symbolically. If you solve it all symbolically, all of your masses cancel out. Uh, so anybody have any idea what this is? Okay, and then we have our potential energy at B is equal to MGHB is equal to mass is 800 kg, G is 9.81 meters per second squared. What's the height at B? 30. Right here, 40. 40. Question, where's the reference? He said h is equal to zero at the, the bottom ground. Twenty. So it's twenty. Because the radius is ten, so therefore the diameter is twenty, and that equals what? One hundred fifty-six thousand nine hundred sixty joules. One. One five six nine six zero zero. Okay. It's all and for H. What? It's all for H. Uh, so basically, our height is equal to from this equation here. Our height is potential energy. So it's m g h is equal to. KEB plus PEB minus uh, KE at A. So we basically get our height, kinetic energy at B is 39243 joules, plus potential energy at B is 156960 joules, minus kinetic energy at A is 3600 joules. And this will all be over 800 kg times 9.81 meters per second squared. And when we do all of this, it's 24.5 what? Meters. 
So we basically have to be over twice as high as the uh, circle to get uh, to get what? So that you're going to be going around a B and not falling off the track. What's the velocity? How do you figure out the velocity at C? Same way. So we basically have kinetic energy at B plus potential energy at B has to equal kinetic energy at C plus potential energy at C. Uh, what's the potential energy at C? It's, yeah, your mass, which is 800 kg times 9.81 meters per second squared times 14 meters. And your uh, kinetic energy at C is 1 half times 800 kg times whatever your Vc squared. When you do this, your velocity at C, when you do the math, is 14.69 meters per second. And then uh, from your free body diagram, and mg is equal to mv squared over r. You get basically that n is equal to mv squared over r minus mg, and when that works out, you end up with 16.8 kilonewtons. So that's going to be the load on the top of the track that your truss system is going to need to support. Does the normal force go from the tracks to the car? The normal force goes from the tracks to the car and from the car to the tracks. Right for every action, there's an equal opposite reaction. So yeah, that's the experience that the, the tracks have to provide on the uh, car. The principle of conservation of energy is usually what compared to the principle of work and energy? Harder, easier, same amount of work? It's a mystery. I feel like this is a very subjective question. Very subjective? Could be a mystery. It is a mystery. This is subjective. Okay, we'll call it. Two more votes. Express your opinion. One, two, yay. So the answer is it's a mystery. Uh, theater, it's easier, but it's also the same amount of work. <laughs> Which is a mystery. So like, it's usually it's easier to not get, it's easier to get the answer right because you're less likely to get confused. Uh, that takes too much time, so the answer is 3.8 meters per second. <laughs> Let's go.